Hello again. When looking at the photographs of the thousands of migrants gathered on the border between Poland and Belarus, one is able to gain a sense of just what three or four thousand refugees without any belongings actually looks like en masse. And it's possible to imagine the problems which Poland would face if that large body of men and women, principally of course young men, somehow managed to breach the border. Looking after them and providing food and accommodation and clothing would be a logistical nightmare for the Polish government. One sympathises with the Polish in their desperate attempts to prevent the border being breached because once this particular group managed to get through, there would be literally millions more from Africa and Asia willing to follow in their footsteps. I sympathise with the Poles but I have more sympathy for my own country. This is because Britain no longer has a border of any kind. People can, and do, quite literally sail in without any formalities at all, and then expect us to take care of them. There's no razor wire or deployments of troops to, to deter them. Quite the opposite. We simply send out our forces to collect them on what should be our border and then welcome them to the country. Look at the thumbnail to this video and you get some idea of what faces Poland. The difference is that they are managing to control their border and we are not. A week ago I was about to post a video about the new daily record number of illegal immigrants who had entered the country by crossing the English Channel. On November the 5th, it was announced that 853 people had crossed the Channel in one day. I give a link in the description to this video of a newspaper article mentioning this. Today, though, it appears that this record has been broken. Yesterday, over a thousand people entered this country illegally by that route across the channel. This puts the situation on the Polish border into some kind of perspective. They have three or four thousand people camped on their border and are fearful that letting them in would create a crisis. Britain has let in that number this month alone. It has created a crisis, but not one that any politician or newspaper feels like discussing openly. People wring their hands and blame the French, but nobody is prepared actually to do something. This wave of ragged and penniless immigrants is instead treated like some natural event, which just has to be managed as best we are able. The thousands of people who have forced their way into this country across our borders since the beginning of the month are not a natural catastrophe like an earthquake or flood. This is a ridiculous way of looking at a sovereign nation's borders. No country can possibly be expected to watch the daily breaching of its borders and then merely to shrug and accept it as a natural order. At the moment, Britain is just a nation state with a single identity. As such, the integrity of its borders is vital. If we are not careful, this country is going to end up like the former country of Yugoslavia, breaking up into separate components. Those of us who are not keen on seeing the balkanisation of our nation are viewing with uneasy increasing number of people with different ideas about such fundamental matters of democracy entering the country in large numbers. It is a recipe for disaster. The twin crises on the borders of Poland and Britain and to some extent Europe in general are not separate things but rather part of a world historical movement of populations of the kind seen many times before in history. Essentially many of those living in what was once thought of as the third world have decided that Europe has a better standard of living and so that's where they'll go and live. If this movement is not checked, then the 
one inevitable result will be a fall in the standard of living and quality of life in Europe until it is in line with the level seen in the less economically developed countries of Africa and Asia. This is inevitable. I can't really see how anybody can fail to see that if you allow unlimited numbers of people from poorer countries to come and live in more prosperous countries, that those more prosperous countries will not, in the end, reach a balance with the poor countries. It's simply a matter of economics. This is, in effect, an unplanned invasion, and the more prosperous nations of the world are under siege by those who simply want what we have. Parallels might be drawn with previous movements into Europe, especially that which culminated with the siege of Vienna in 1683. This, though, needs, I think, a separate video of its own. The hour is growing late, and unless action is taken very soon, then we need not bother at all, and must simply accept the fall of Europe as a fait accompli.